Hello everyone. How are you? I hope you are doing great as usual. I am back with yet another video to help you become a bad ass developer. Today's topic is really interesting yet easily overlooked by many of us. But here I am to help you save some trouble. Taking these small steps can help you to become an efficient developer. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Pep 8 programming recommendations for Python. Guys, this is the second part of the video that I made earlier. As I had a lot of things to discuss in this section, so I decided to create a dedicated video for this topic. Personally, this is the most interesting section for me. As you may see that you have been making these silly mistakes while writing code. Code should be written in a way that does not disadvantage other implementation of Python such as PyPy, Jython, IronPython, CPython, etc. For example, one of the most basic thing we use in our day-to-day -day coding is concatenation. You would be amazed to see that you might have been using it in a wrong way as there is a more efficient way of writing the same. Now that we are into the VS code, as you can see here, to save your time, I've already prepared an example for you. Uh, in this example, I've taken two variables, A and B, A is equal to apple, B is equal to pie, and we are, we are performing a simple concatenation using A plus equal to B, or the other way, which is the same thing, is just a shorter format of this. And if I run this example, and I'm simply printing it, and if I run this example, you can see here, I'm getting that apple pie. In this example, we used a plus equal to b or a equal to a plus b for concatenation and the code that is written behind the scenes to implement this is written in cpython. Even though cpython's implementation is very efficient, still it is recommended not to rely on this implementation at, as it is fragile. The optimization works for some types and isn't present at all in other implementations that don't use ref counting okay now we'll see the recommended way of concatenating two strings or more uh, by pep so basically uh, there's a special method called join that we are going to use in the, we are going to use in this example a is equal to a is equal to as i'm going to uh, concatenate these two strings with a space so that is why i've added this space then the join method join method and the array of variables that I want to join. So I will add A and B there. So this is the simple way of using it. You can directly send a container as well. So basically this is how you can do uh, this uh, joining in an efficient way. I will show you the uh, output of, of this as well, which is the same apple pie. Comparisons to none type. Comparisons to singletons like none should always be done with is or is not and never with the equality operators as I've done here because I wanted to show it that it's not the recommended way of using it. Instead, we should always use is not or is or is not uh, when, whenever we want to compare it to a none. In this example, I wanted to show you the wrong way of comparing it to none with uh, in, and the correct way of comparing it, comparing it with none. So as you can see, I've taken a variable names and I've assigned it to none. And uh, all three things are doing the same thing, but the later part is the recommended and preferred way. And it is more readable and it will be, it is more intuitive and like every programmer a programmer will consider this only okay so if i run it so as you can see nothing is shown because obviously it is none and if i uh, add if i make it a string then as you can see all three are giving me the same exact output but beware of using this is not none when you're dealing with container whenever we are using this is not operator but uh, it fails in case of in case of a container so in this case even though it's uh, empty it will still print this hola because yes uh, because it is comparing it to none but what if if you want to check this uh, as if it's uh, empty or not so the other way of uh, using it is 
or most of the people use it is using the length operator length names equal to equal to zero then they'll print something like it's empty uh yeah it's empty and if you run it now then the it's empty will be printed but there's a much shorter and quicker way of comparing it if it's empty or not or if it's none with sim by simply writing if names if names uh, then print it's it's not empty if i run it now then see it will not print it and if i add if not names then now it will print it so as you can see this is the much quicker way and easier way of comparing it to the empty or none string when implementing ordering operations with rich comparisons it is best to implement all six operations which is dunder eq dunder any which is not equals dunder lt which is less than dunder le which is less than equal to dunder gt and dunder ge so all six uh, comparison operators should be implemented whenever you are implementing a compar comparator for a class why i will give you a brief example about it so what are this dunder eq and the other five operators that i just mentioned so uh, for this i've taken a simple example so as you can see here i've prepared a class person whose object basically has first name last name and age and i've created a two uh, two objects of it which is adam and eve i've given the name of it and i've given the same age for this for them so if i print adam equal to equal to eve what do you think will happen yes as you guessed it right it will it is going to uh, say that it is false because these are not equal which is not equal but uh, but uh, your use case is different uh, in this you wanted uh, to compare two objects on the basis of age if the age is same then you are going to say true and if it is not then you are going to say it as false so how will you do it so the other so in order to do that only uh, we need this dunder eq method so what this method does is basically it overrides this e double equals to operator it overrides it and we can add our own logic into it so here for this as you uh, if you want to know if you want to know what is this then please refer to my previous video i have explained uh, in it uh, briefly so uh, here uh, in this case i'm checking if it's an object uh then return uh then compare the age and if it's equal then send it true or false based on the uh input so now if i now if i run the program then it will give the output as true because i i have told this person class to do so so what pep it says is that whenever you have such use case you just don't have to implement this dunder eq method instead you should implement all the other five operators as well why the reason behind that is the reason behind that is very simple because uh, pep uh, like according to pep 207 indicates that reflexivity uh, reflexivity rules are assumed by python thus the interpreter may swap y is greater than x with x is less than y or y is greater than equal to x with x is less than equal to y and may swap the arguments of x equal to equal to y and x not equal to y the sort and min operations are uh, are guaranteed to use the less uh, less than operator and the max function uses the greater than operator however it is best to implement all six operations so that confusion doesn't arise in other contexts so yes so that is why you should always implement all six operators because behind the scenes you may never know what might happen def statements whenever we are using the lambda function in our code we tend to forget the sole purpose of the lambda itself most of the time we end up writing f equal to lambda x uh, which is 2x 2 times x so, uh, because we wanted to name this lambda with the f so 
but which is which is correct but now uh, but now the use of assignment statement eliminates the sole benefit a lambda expression can offer over an explicit def statement and that is that it can be embedded inside a larger expression so if you come across a situation where you want to name a lambda expression instead what i would recommend you or what pep recommends you to do is by writing by using the def if itself def f of x equal to return to time x which which is doing the same thing as lambda itself and now with this name it will be easier for you to track and debug later so yes use lambda only in a larger larger function or larger expression and don't name it whenever you want to name it just simply use the def statement derive exceptions from exception and not base exception so always derive the exceptions from exception rather than base exception direct inheritance from base exception is reserved for exceptions where catching them is almost always the wrong thing to do so whenever you you have a requirement where you want to have your own exception class then you need first of all you need to follow uh, the pep recommended way of naming uh, exception class which is to add error suffix at the end of your class name exception class name so that is done the other thing is that most of the time we end up uh, inheriting it from the exception class uh, base exception class which is this uh, we most of the time do this but this is the absolute wrong way of doing it because as i just mentioned it is reserved for other exceptions and we should always uh, derive our exception class from exception class itself because exception inherits the base exception class itself so what's the point of directly uh, inheriting our exception or deriving our class from the base exception itself okay design design exception hierarchies based on the distinctions that code catch uh, code catching the exception is likely to need rather than the locations where the exceptions are raised aim to answer the question what went what went wrong programmati uh, programmatically rather than only stating that a problem occurred while deriving classes yeah. exception catching you might say that you have seen this plenty of times before i know but believe me this is something different when catching exceptions mention specific exceptions whenever possible instead of using a bare except clause a bare except clause which is this uh, will catch system exit and keyboard interrupt exceptions making it harder to interrupt a program with control c and can disguise other problems like in our case we exactly know what exception is going to occur so that is why uh, that is why i have already added this zero division error so that is how you should do and even if you don't know exactly what's going to come next then you should always stick to exception class and never leave it blank like this it is absolutely not the recommended way of doing it another most important thing related to exception handling is limit the code present in try clause to the absolute minimum to avoid masking bugs for example here this is the correct way of doing it i have a method handle value which basically handles the value and doing some job uh, whereas on the other hand if the key is not present in that particular collection then i'm simply raising it or printing it, printing the uh, error through this method called key not found and i'm passing the key as a parameter so if you see in this case i'm only ch i'm only always checking names of key that means the uh, error or the exception that may raise from this particular line of code will always be key related error which is what i'm actually trying to take so this is correct and if the error is not present then in the else block i'm handling the value which is the absolute correct way of doing it but 
but in our day to day programming in most of the time in in our companies also we end up end up doing this uh, thing like we are directly handle we are directly handling this inside try and accept block which is the uh, wrong way of doing it because just imagine if the error has occurred uh, error uh, has occurred within the handle value function itself and not with the key uh, error how are you going to distinguish uh, between this so that is why and that is why we should always limit our line of code inside the try to the absolute minimum because in this case which is not the recommended way of doing it in this case we are masking the bugs raised by the handle value under this key not found itself because irrespective of the error that may occur inside this function we are always going to we are always throwing the same error which is which is key not found which is not the correct way return statements another basic but very important concept the most common mistake we do is with the return statements only we need to be consistent with the return statements either all return statements in a function should return an expression or none of them should if any return statement returns an expression and any other statement where no value is returned should explicitly state this as return none in this case where i have, i have written a function where i am checking if the value is greater than or equal to 1 if it is uh, if it is true then i am saying uh, simply uh, taking a square root of it else i am not leaving it blank instead i am returning it as none which is very helpful for the calling function so but which is the wrong way of doing it which is this that uh, in in this function uh, i am only checking if a is less than 0 if it is 0 then i am calling this function else i am not returning anything and which is not correct way of doing it so we should be very consistent with the returning uh, statements slicing we should always use a starts with and ends with instead of string slicing to check for prefixes or suffixes starts with and ends with a cleaner and less error prone so in this example i have taken a name adam and i just want to check if it if it starts with ad so there are multiple ways of doing it so the wrong way of doing it is actually slicing the uh, string itself which is which, which we should never do uh, here i'm checking start with zero and end with two if it is then doing the same exact thing but not the recommended way of doing it and uh, but the correct way of doing it is using the starts with operator which is very optimized and better than this slicing operator so basically name starts with ad easy very easy and similarly name ends with am easy peasy with this we have come towards the end of our video thank you so much guys for watching it i hope you liked my work please consider subscribing to the channel as more such content is on the way.